When I was 16, my father punched me in the face. We were in an ugly shouting match. I don't even remember what it was about. I could be difficult back then, and so could he. Then he stood in front of me, fist raised, awaiting my counter punch. I got set to deliver that punch. But then something happened. His good fathering of me over the previous 16 years overcame the bad moment between us. So I did not punch him back. Instead, I squared my shoulders to him, my still narrow shoulders. I looked him in the eye and I said quietly, don't ever hit me again. And he never did. My father was a good man. I loved him till and after he died 16 years ago. He'd done a bad thing that day. I called him on it as he'd taught me to and we both became better people for it. We never talked about the incident, though I wish we had. I hope that he came to think about it the same way I came to think about it, and that is, it didn't so much illustrate a deficit in our relationship as a triumph in it. It wasn't so much about his violent temper that nearly produced a fist fight between us as it was about his good fathering that prevented that fight. I'm glad the fist fight was averted. He would have won, but we both would have lost. Like my father, I've done bad things with those I love, and they've called me on it, just as I called my father on it, and we too have become better people for it. That's the nature of humans and power. Power doesn't make a person bad, but it does enable them to do bad things if they aren't called out for it. The Quakers had an expression for this. They called it, speak truth to power. This country was born because wise and courageous people spoke truth to power. We survived because those people established a system to ensure that we could always speak truth to power. And we have. People demanded that women have the right to vote. People demanded an end to racial segregation. People protested a mismanaged Vietnam War. People reclaimed the presidency from Richard Nixon. Americans know that government is to serve us, not the other way around. Our government is indeed of the people, by the people, and for the people. The 51,000 dead Americans over whom Abraham Lincoln spoke those words at Gettysburg did not die in vain, and the system so conceived has not yet perished from the earth. So let's forget the mendacious sound bites about little policies that pollute the political airwaves as America journeys to its God-given destiny. Much more important is the allocation of power between a people and their government. Abusive is not too strong a word for our current government. We were promised a new government of hope and change. What we got is an old government of intrusion, a stealthy government of deception, a manipulative government that divides us to conquer us. I love America as I love my father. But the American government is run by humans. Humans are fallible. Unless held accountable, fallible humans with power will abuse it, and they have. We're being punched in the face by our government. Americans are the product of two centuries of good parenting, and we should not punch back. We're Americans, not a mob, and we should not despair. This is not the time for violence, nor despair. This is the time for the people, again, to triumph. This is the time, again, for the people to square up, look our government in the eye, and say, don't ever hit me again. This is the time, again, for the people to speak truth to power.